Hello and welcome to the Divorce to Bliss podcast. Here you will learn all things related to healing from divorce, mind, body, and spirit, so you can create a beautiful new life filled with happiness. I'm Rachel Ruby, author of Divorce to Bliss, divorce coach, speaker, and attorney, and I'm so glad you found me here. Hello and welcome to the Divorce to Bliss podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about something that is very scary to a lot of people, and that is dating after divorce or dating, especially in midlife. And my guest today is Lori Gerber. Lori is a dating and relationship coach with over 20 years of experience. She offers life, dating, and relationship coaching and specializes in helping women over 50 date with success and men as well. And like I mentioned, for so many people, dating after divorce is really scary. Even the idea of doing this is really scary. So let's welcome Lori to the podcast and hope we can give you a lot of great information. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So like I said, I think the idea of dating causes so much stress with people. And you have created this list of do's and don'ts for dating. And anyone can use this list. You don't have to be a midlifer. Um, over 50, but I think it's great for those people because they're really coming into this whole new dating landscape that they yeah. never saw most likely when they were dating before, it right? So different. Yeah. 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 So different. So let's start with the do's of dating because I love, we'll start on a positive note. Um, the first one on your list is to believe in love again. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So I break down my coaching into three different segments. Readiness, the handheld hunt, communication for the long haul. Okay. Readiness can take a while. <laughs> it can take anything from a few days to a few yeah. years, depending on how many obstacles you have. Yeah. And when I say obstacles, I mean things in your subconscious or things in your conscious mind that prevent you from believing in love. Now, you might think you believe in love, but actually the results show the truth, which is that you don't. Or you might know that you don't believe in love and not know why. Or you might know that you don't believe in love, know some of the reasons why, but not all of the reasons. I have a list of 34. Um, Or (laughs) you might know that you don't believe in love and know all of the reasons, but not necessarily have worked through all of them. And any of those places can slow you down in getting to that click, I call it the click where you go, Oh, I'm going to do this. <laughs> like I'm going to do this. Like, you know, when you decide to quit smoking or run a marathon, I'm going to do this is the kind of mentality you need to get back into dating in the modern world. You need to have that click of believing again, believing in love, believing in love for you and having that level of confidence to then go tackle a very new skill set, a very new skill set. So believing in love is step number one. You can't really go very far without it. If you're trying to date without that foundation in place, if you're trying online or not online or whatever, it might be why you're struggling. Yeah, 100%. And and that's what I see. And with myself personally, I waited two years to date. And again, like you said, it really varies person to person. But um, what you're talking about is doing the healing work. And that's what that's what I work on with my clients. So a lot of clients think that they should just go out and start dating right away, because especially I see it, especially among men. It's really interesting because they want to they tend yeah. to want to replace what they had with another. Um, I, and I coach more women than men. But with the women, I think it's um, it's more of a fear of being alone. And we can get into that later. But yes, I love the idea of readiness and understanding why you, you know, what you want and, and what's blocking you and all of that. So you can move forward and be successful. Okay. So the next, oh yeah, go ahead. I want to say something about jumping in too quickly. I think there are some advantages of jumping in. So I don't want to, you know, say you can't jump in before you're ready. I think there are advantages Mm -hmm. to practicing, to getting your feet wet, to building your confidence, to practicing certain things. So I don't, across the board poo poo dating before you're quote unquote fully ready fully healed yeah. but the danger of it and this is a very like the, i think the danger often outweighs the advantages the danger i would say and if this speaks to you please put yourself on the bench as i call it and do your work you get too tired you get too disappointed 
and you prove your own bad theories true. Like you prove it true. You can't pick well. You tr- prove it true that you won't be picked. You prove it true that there are no good ones. You prove it true that there's scammers on the internet. You pr- like you prove uh, bad theories true. And that can then make it so much harder to get off the bench when you are ready. Yeah. Good point. Very good point. Yeah. Okay. So your second do when it comes to dating is to admit you want love. Right. Just like you have to admit you have a problem when you have an addiction. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If you're hiding, if you're undercover, if nobody knows, they won't be able to help you. So you have to admit yeah. it to yourself first, right? It's just telling yourself, okay, we're doing this. This is this is right. our next frontier, our next challenge. Um, and then you obviously want to tell the people around you because the people around you will, if you inform them correctly, bring you the right candidates and also help you remember how you used to sell out and so that you don't do that again. So you do want to admit it, you want to tell people, you want to tell yourself, you want to get yourself really um, in alignment with your own dreams versus, I I hear a lot of people just say like, well, I'll see what happens, right? Or I'll, you Mm -hmm. know, I'll go on the site and see, or maybe I'm ready, or, you know, I'll just, right. we'll see what happens, right? It's like, if someone comes, if Prince Charming comes to my door and knocks and insists on coming in for tea, I'll let him in. So it's. (laughs) It's a way to do it, but it is not the best way to do it. The way I would do it is admit you're ready, admit you're looking, tell people and let people help you. I also think there's a whole other aspect of admitting that you're ready for love because I always say that if you're, you're only ready for love when you love yourself, right? So I think that's kind of where the work comes in because you're going to attract what you are. So if you don't love yourself, like you said, if you think maybe, you know, I'm not good enough or I'm not pretty enough or I'm not skinny enough or I'm not whatever it is, you know, um, I don't, I don't, the the, the nice guys don't like me and whatever it is, then you can actually keep inviting that same pool of people to you. So it's important with that love that it's the love comes from within first so that you're able to put it out there. Right. Right. That's a key component to yeah. believing in love is having it for yeah. yourself because you really yeah. can't believe in it with someone else if you don't believe in it with yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So the next do is to take care of you. Okay. So I remember I said I have 34 things on the list of obstacles <laughs> and this is yes. just gathered from people telling me what their obstacles right. are, why they're not. I'm in this. I'm going to do it. Uh, and one of the most frequent obstacles I find is that there's something about you in your life that you're not proud of, that you're not happy with, that you're not impressed with. So it could be how you eat, how you drink, how you treat your health or a health condition you have, a relationship in your family, how you've executed or resolved your divorce or your relationships with your exes, um, money, how you handle money, how you handle time. So those are the those are kind of like the top few things I hear from people that even though, you know, you might be doing your best, you know that it's not where you want it to be. And so you hold it against yourself subconsciously. And then like you said, you only attract the same caliber as you feel you are. So if you do not Mm. feel you are at a high enough caliber, you will not attract the caliber you might be hoping for to compensate for that. lack. Instead, you want to treat yourself amazingly and do that work for yourself yourself yeah. exactly how you know you deserve to be treated in your heart of hearts and that then will attract someone who wants to treat you that same way and who treats themselves in that same way exactly and, and that's my whole i mean my whole book is pretty much about this learning all of these things that are these ways that you can take care of you um because it's it's how you learn to put you first put you first so you can fall in love with yourself and all these wonderful things that we do for ourselves and um, and, and it's, again, like you said, I mean, I have a huge list too, cause it goes everything from, um, you know, eating and, and exercising and being in nature and writing in your journal and expressing your feelings to, you know, listening to outside sources, giving you information that may not be what you feel in your heart is right. I mean, there's so many things. So, um, yes, <laughs> that is why it's so great to work with someone who can help you discover what exactly you need to focus on so you can keep going down your path. Yeah. Or it's love. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the last do that you have on this list is learning about dating trends. This is one I'm excited to hear about. <laughs> so again, if 
if you are someone who is getting divorced and you've been in a relationship for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you definitely do not know what's going on in dating right now. And most likely, the only things that have a broken through to you are the bad pieces of news, right? Like the, the bad gossip, the bad trends, the bad statistics. I want to encourage you not to listen to that. And I really teach my clients, I, I life coach, I teach my clients across the board, do not exactly to the point you just made, do not take inputs that do not empower your dreams. They may be factually correct, unlikely, but they may be factually correct, but it doesn't help you unless it is confirming that which you wish to believe and that which you wish to manifest. So Mm -hmm. you really have to be judicious about what you listen to. And almost every person I speak to when I vet them for coaching has a statistic or a story or a piece of bad news that is truly spooking them. And I just want to tell you, if you want to look for stuff to spook you, you can find it. You have the internet. You can you could be spooked for the rest of your life every day, all day, if you want to be spooked. Oh, I get the internet. I, even. You could call some you yeah, you can even call people up who say they love you and you can be spooked. <laughs> exactly. So you know so isn't it fishy and interesting that you still allow that in, right? Whereas, uh-huh. you know, you wouldn't let someone bully your kid in your own home. Right. Like, so why do you let yourself get bullied in your own home yeah. by the pieces that are not saying things that are helpful to you? So the inputs I want you to have are stories of hope, right? I just want you to, mm. and there are so many stories of hope. Mostly what people are spooked by is the internet and online dating, which is where a lot of the people are. So a lot mm. of my suggestions have to do with the trend of online dating and the fact that people are on the internet and the fact that people are dating on the internet. The other trend is that there's more equality between men and women now. That's Mm -hmm. new-ish. And it's not that stable. (laughs) But but it's new. And if you were in a marriage that didn't have an equality vibe and you want an equality vibe, you may not, but if you do, that's something that's new. And everybody's learning and grappling with the the change that that is. So I want you to know you're not imagining it. It's new. It's different. People are adjusting more or less and um and that requires introspection it requires conversation and honest back and forth and it requires new types of rituals to have inside of dating rituals of asking questions and telling the truth and having dates outside where you can interact in the world not just a dinner in the back corner of a restaurant and it includes you know different options of who pays for what and there's just all kinds of newness in the culture And there's all different newness in terms of technology and the trends where, again, 50 years ago, you couldn't be dating 20 people at a time. You couldn't be talking to 10 people at a time. You couldn't even probably be dating three or four people at a time because you just literally, the logistics were impossible. But here with internet dating, that makes us uh, more likely to think we can do better and also more likely to be fatigued, more likely to be disappointed, more likely to feel ghosted, more likely to feel... Um, that, that we're never sure if we chose right. I mean, there there are yeah. real strengths and weaknesses to the the trend of online dating and the fact that everybody is in one place where you can see them from the comfort of your own home. Very different. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's great. That's great advice. And yes, definitely um, navigating a new world with, with the dating. <laughs> so, okay, we're going to get into the don'ts now. And the first one on this list is don't talk or look poorly at online dating. So we kind of kind of just segued into that. And you did mention that a little bit. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add because you really you really covered that. But I can speak about I can speak about people's safety concerns and and really validate you, especially if you're in midlife or older. If you haven't been dating, you you, if you haven't had sex in 10 years, you know, I mean, you could feel very vulnerable getting back out into that world. So. Yeah. I just want to reassure you that your intuition does still work. And if something smells fishy, it probably is. And I want to invite you to follow your intuition if something feels fishy. All the way to, you can background check people now, right? Yep. You, you, you need yep. to find your person on the internet, right? If they don't exist on the internet somewhere, that's a red flag. You need to have a video chat before you have a live date. You need to see if there's chemistry. You need to see what's in their background. You need to see if they'll show up for a video chat. So if you're, yeah. if you're dating seriously, there are a lot, I have another list of 12 safety tips, but 
<laughs> the point is that there are safety tips. And if you follow those safety yeah. tips, you're going to be safe. You're, it's not like right. you're in danger just by nature of getting back into dating. You're not. You're in danger if uh-huh. you do stupid choices. Right? <laughs> you're in danger. Right, if right, 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 right. Don't pay attention right. to your intuition, but you're not actually yeah. in danger. So I really want to encourage yeah. folks who are scared of online dating for safety reasons, emotional and physical safety reasons, that protection is available. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a, such a great idea because there are a lot of people who are scared. And how do I know this person's for real? How do I know, you know, they're, I mean, obviously I'm sure many people when they write their profiles are, you know, maybe exaggerating a little or puffing or whatever because they, they want to attract them. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and another thing I just wanted to just mention quickly, because, um, there are some people that don't want online date and I was one of them. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with this. I just was very clear on who I wanted to date and what I needed and what I wanted. And, um, I just, you know, my, my friends would say kind of what you said earlier, like Rachel, someone's not going to just come knock on your door and go, Hey, let's go out. And I said, well, yeah, you can't just if you don't want to try the online dating, you can't just sit in your house and expect that you're going to meet some quality people. And that was my thing is I really wanted to date quality men. And so I put myself out there and I would go out with friends and I would go places where there were people. And, you know, eventually I met this wonderful man who checked every single box, which I didn't even expect that, but it happened, you know? So I think, again, it really depends on the person but I don't, I don't poo poo online dating. I think it is definitely necessary for most people. Um, and it's not necessary. It's just extremely useful. And, and well, it's useful just- because it, like you said, everybody's out there. I mean, the majority of people are there. So it's really you millions. Meet a wide net of <laughs> you want to throw out your net and catch, you know, the most prospects or potential people to date. That's where you go. Exactly. I was more of the, you know, uh, mindset that, you know, I would, oh yeah, one at a time, probably I'll meet someone. But then I ended up dating like five or six men at the same time. And it's just because I, I, I really, I manifested it. I mean, it was, yeah. I mean, that's a whole other story, you're, but you I are did. Good. I put, you are good. If you are good <laughs> at getting dates in real life, by yeah. all means, that is, is more efficient because you can see if you have chemistry with someone in person, it's, it is more yeah. efficient do that most people don't have those spiritual yeah. skills or that necessarily the personality that yeah you know, that that uh makes that and i mean i mean obvious yeah, yeah and going through divorce i mean I, I was i didn't i didn't i i promised myself that i would never compromise what i needed in a par- partner and yeah. that I did not start dating until I felt in my heart and knew in my heart that I was okay being alone for the rest of my life rather than being someone who was not a person that would mirror what I needed, right? Or give me what I needed and I could give them what they needed. So obviously it's a mutual thing. Um, right. But I think that is just so important. And I think that fear of being alone is just a huge, huge factor in this whole right. dating. Right. And you, we also yeah. have the flip side with a lot of people thinking, yeah, do I even want to do this? Like, I like being yeah. alone. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I do too. Not that until like you're 75 and your kids are gone. Like, I mean, it, it, it does last for a while. And I do believe yeah. there are people who are better off alone. But we have yeah. the whole gamut from I'm better off alone to I'm so lonely, I'll take anything. And <laughs> again, to your yeah. point, you have to know the ways in which you sell out and make a promise to yourself not to yep. sell out that's another do yeah. like yeah make a promise to yourself and your friends not to sell out because that that's great otherwise you are gonna spend so much time in an eddy of fixer-uppers you know on yourself and on them that yeah. again exhausts you disappoints you and leaves right. you very bad theories about dating exactly it's knowing your self-worth and standing in that you know, in that hole, as the tide keeps coming and the hole's getting deeper and deeper, it doesn't matter. You stay there. You stay there and you just focus on that because you you are good enough. You do deserve, you do, you know. But again, like you said, it's, it, it's so it's so individual dependent. So um, we'll kind of leave it at that. But another one of your don'ts is don't think it's too late for inner work. Love this one. Yeah, I think you probably <laughs> many times on your podcast, but... Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you how many people over 50 think 
you know, I did that when I was young or I, I've been yep. through therapy. I've been through therapy for 10 years or I just went through a divorce and we went to counseling or, you know, I've done all my work. And th- my answer to you is if you don't have the result you want, you haven't done all the work. And that's actually exactly. great news. That is great news. And why it's so I great agree. that you and I have checklists from experience with other clients is you don't have to wonder and dig around in the muck. You can just go through the checklist and go, oh, it's these five things. It's these 10 things. Uh, let me get to work on this. And I'm sure you have, you know, methodologies. I, I have methodologies for everything that people bump into. And it's great news. There's a methodology you haven't tried that will work. That's great. Yeah. If you really want that love, you have not tried everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you said it. I mean, that is, this is so true. So uh, you are never, never too old to do the work. And like I always say, even when you are, healed we're still always healing there's always something we're still always learning about who we are and learning how to work on something you never get to the point where it's just like in life you never get to the point where it's always smooth sailing there's going to be something that happens someone gets sick something happens at work and you just have to learn again how you're going to deal with it and it comes from here it comes from the love of yourself and that allows you to be able to shift in these changing times and the changing things that happen in your life so yeah great okay the next one is don't get spooked easily you kind of alluded to that a little bit yeah there are three things that i think spook people one is that people lie two is that people ghost and three is that it's actually hard it's actually work to date right like it actually takes time it takes energy it takes mental and spiritual work um you got to get it up every time, you know, you got to actually have good self-talk. So I think people get spooked by the work and think because we've been brainwashed by Disney, it's supposed to just be like, it's just, I'm supposed to know it's supposed to just happen. (laughs) Yeah. And yes, we want there to be a spark in chemistry, but we're focused on the wrong thing. And it's the same in relationships, right? Relationships are work. We know this. So I encourage people not to be spooked by the work, but rather to be proud that they're doing the work. The benefits of that work then extend out to all the other areas of life too. But let me just go back to lying and ghosting real quick. I did a whole TEDx talk on this. You can look it up. It's called The Secret Free Diet. It is my 18 minutes on the fact that everybody lies. Everybody lies. (laughs) If you're morally against it, even if you think you don't, you do. And it's all kinds of different lying. It's not just outright lying. Oh, I'm 69. Oh, really? I'm 72. It's omission. Oh, I didn't mention, you know, I have a kid at home. Uh, I didn't mention I have herpes, you know. It's exactly, <laughs> it's, it's, it's exaggeration, under exaggeration, avoiding conflicts, secrets. You know, it's, it, there's a, I've counted, you know, you know, I like lists. I've counted over 50 ways people lie. So instead of being spooked by that fact and being like, I can't trust anyone. What I recommend my clients do is to think about how they lie. Right. To get very crystal clear. Do you, do you fake orgasms? Do you pretend you're happy when you're not? Do you pretend you like kind of food you don't like? Do you fudge about your age? Do you, you know, does everyone know you get Botox and you blah, blah, blah. Right. So get to know your style of lying so you can be responsible for it and the, and the side effects and then have some compassion for why people lie. They lie because they want you to give them a chance. That's why they lie. And there are two Mm -hmm. categories of people. There's categories of people who are going to continue to lie, believe in lying, and do it to get their way. And people who don't believe in lying, but want to lie to get their foot in the door. That category of people, if they come clean to you in the video chat, you can trust and continue to get to know. The other category Mm -hmm. of people who you find out they were lying, they don't come clean to you. It's repetitive. It happens more than once. There's no remorse. Those are not your people. Okay? And, and the more you cultivate your own honesty, the more you will find honesty coming back at you. That's what I have to say about why. Ghosting is part of dating online. You can't get yeah. spooked by it. Ironically, I'm telling you not to get spooked by ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and I, so I just want to say, you know, you know the analogy probably of like a 300 batting average means you're missing seven out of 10 times mm-hmm. that you, you know. So, the point okay. is, I would take your word for that. 
I, the point is, or we could talk about the analogy of being an entrepreneur. Most entrepreneurs fail and most of their businesses, they just keep going until they succeed. Yeah. It is the same with dating. If you are going to get ghosted. The reason you're going yeah. to get ghosted is most people can't multitask and manage a lot. Mm. And most people are dating multiple people on the sites because that's the game that they're in. Yeah, so yeah. you're occasionally going to get ghosted. Every time you get ghosted, you've dodged a bullet of ending up with someone that isn't your person. So I want you to celebrate getting ghosted. I don't want you to ghost people. I want you to kindly, nicely, and politely tell them it's not a match, but thank you. Yeah. Because yeah. karma. But if you get ghosted, I want you to refuse to take it personally because it is not personal. It is not personal. Even if it's, oh, they didn't like your nose or your height or your weight or your hair color or your age, that's still not personal. <laughs> that's just not a match yeah. with the person. It's just not a match. So you dodged a bullet. So don't get spooked by ghosting. Don't get spooked by lying. Listen for lying. Be discerning about lying. And don't get spooked by the fact that it takes time. And energy. Wow. I mean, the, the lying and the ghosting thing, that was such great advice. And I, I got ghosted by somebody. And it's so funny because he asked me out. And, um, and then I responded and I'm like, sure, you know, when do you want to go? I'd never heard from him. And then a few days later, I said, uh, did you still want to go out? And it's so funny. I just started laughing. I thought, oh God, you know, his loss, whatever. I don't ever want to go out with this guy. Obviously, you know, that's not how I want to be treated. And it's, it's, it wasn't me. I knew that, but it was, it was just interesting. It was, it was an interesting thing. And it, it was, it was someone that I met on Facebook, not on a, like a dating site, but still a friend of a friend type of thing, you know, anyway. <laughs> okay. So the other, the next don't we have is don't go back in time values wise. Yeah. That's just speaking to, if you didn't like the values in your marriage, please don't project them. Mm, onto yep. the next person the next person is a whole new person and he yeah. or she or they would really like to be treated as a whole new person right. really they don't like it they get offended when you bring your past baggage whether it's yeah. inequality or abusiveness or fighting style or whatever it is they yeah. don't bring that baggage to the next one do your work so you can leave it in the past and bring a clean new slate based on your truest values because now you're not under pressure to have a baby, usually, in the second yeah. time around. You don't have to yeah. settle. You can actually be true to your values and find someone whose values mesh well with yours. True. Yeah, that's great. That's also great advice. So, And then the last don't is, don't say there is nobody out there. Again, it's one of those popular obstacles, yeah. believing yeah. in love or excuses people give. I don't know if you hear this, but it I hear it all the, all the time. There's yeah. literally millions of single people out there's there. No, there's millions no one out there for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, millions. And, and yeah. And new ones are becoming available every day. And I don't think people, it's like we go into denial about that fact. And I don't mean because their partner dies or gets or divorces them. I mean, new people are becoming available like the click, like ready to find their person. Or having grown up with someone who's inappropriate, ready now to find their person. Or yes, a partner's deceased. They've been through the right grieving process and now ready, right? So people are becoming energetically, emotionally, and spiritually ready mm -hmm. every day, all day. And if you're not out there looking and be shining your light and being available, you will not be one of the candidates they see. And they will find someone else because there's not just one soulmate for everyone. There's multiples. True, so true. There is no scarcity, except in your mind. New ones are becoming available all the time. There are literally millions. Your geography is not the reason you're not finding the person. And I had one other point, but I don't remember it. Because <laughs> I'm in midlife. <laughs> I think you said like to keep, to keep trying, keep going. And I don't know if that was your other point. Yeah, it's, it's just... Yeah. It's a fishy excuse if you... Oh, I, you helped me remember. Thank you. My mm -hmm. mantra is, if you exist, they exist. Mm -hmm. If you exist, they yeah. exist. And to think like, that someone like you exists, but there's no counterpart to you, means you are the most unique unicorn in the whole wide world. <laughs> <laughs> but unlikely, right? And it's not, yeah. That, yeah. You know, it's not that there's someone else just like you, but there's somebody who matches you. Because that's... Right. That's balance is nature, right? That right. is the 
nature of being alive is balance. The nature of nature is balance. And so it would be very unlikely that there could be a you, but no counterpart to you. More likely is you're scared. More likely is you're scared. More likely is you've got some work to do. That's all. Right. You've got the work to do. You're scared. Perfect. We can get to work and we can deal with your fear. Not a problem. If you really want that suitable companion. Yeah. Great advice. And I know, like you said, you are a list maker. I too am a list maker. Those are some great do's and don'ts for people who are um midlife or any time in life but especially midlifers because like we said it's a harder time to get back out there in this new dating landscape and um before we go i just wanted to chat with you real quick about uh the list the list because i encourage all my clients to make a list and it, it's really interesting how that list morphs as you heal um so in the beginning you know, I have clients to say like oh well he has to be six two and he has to be this and he has to work out and you know and okay fine I, I help them divide it and make different categories of the list. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, obviously they they may compromise on some of those physical aspects, physical attributes, but um, the real important thing I think is what they have inside in here that's going to complement you and, um, and value you as a person and value your self-worth. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add about list making, because I know you enjoy that, but, yeah. and specifically when you're starting this whole process of yeah. deciding whether, you know, it's I, have time a date. I have a different vantage point on that. And it's okay. because I find that women generally, people generally ignore either their head, their heart or their hoo-ha. Mm-hmm. So there's the practical, how it feels and what turns you on. And right. people ignore one or two of those usually and sell out. I used to sell out. I'd go for the hot guy and who was not intellectually or emotionally appropriate for me. I'd get hurt. Then I'd go to the smart right. guy. I'd be bored and not turned on. And then I got back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> so we sell out on one or both or back and forth. And so I get my clients to break down their criteria by head, heart, and hoo-ha categories. Love it. I love um, it. But I think the reason why you're so focused on heart is because that's what women have been selling out on culturally in the last 50 years. So I think that's why you're kind of going like, hey, ladies, you know, like you've been forsaking heart. You might have picked something to look good on paper. You wanted kids. You got sperm. You might have got the guy who turned you on, but he doesn't turn you on anymore. He cheated. Now it's time to focus on heart, which I think is the right rebalancing Uh, out of women in this era. But not all. And I don't think it's a comprehensive enough paradigm. So I really force my ladies to look for all three and vet according to all three. Practical, how it feels, and turn on. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really interesting. I think also in my realm where I'm helping people who did come out of marriage and most are, you know, a lot of them are midlife, not all of them, but um, that did come out of marriage and want something that wasn't there that didn't give them something they needed and it it could be in one of those three areas i mean like for me um going into this you know i'm I'm a highly educated woman so i didn't have that in my in my partner and so that was really important to me because i felt like something was not there that i needed you know and and i think that turns me on right so it's kind of i don't know i guess there's a give and take in all of these things and ways of you know, something might get, have to give, but, um, but yeah, feeling is a huge thing. And for me, my whole journey was about opening my heart. So it was, um, you know, again, depends on what someone's working on and right. what they need. So, yeah. yeah. So Bye. thank you. Uh, so much great advice. I feel like you and I could, could sit here for a long time and, um, I want to give, so is the best place to reach you at your website at lauriegerber.com? That is, that's perfect. Yeah. So we are going to put that up on the screen for those who are watching and for listeners. Um, it'll be in the show notes, but it's Lori Gerber, G-E-R-B-E-R.com. And a uh, Lori, I should spell is L-A-U-R-I-E Gerber.com. And uh, I know, Lori, on your website, you have a test that people can take. Is that right? Can you tell a little I bit do. about that? I have a date like you mean it test. Are you ready? So that okay. first stage is readiness. There's many criteria to being ready. If you'd like to assess your readiness and start to see what some of those obstacles are you can go ahead and take that free quiz you get a score on a scale of one to a hundred just like in school and you can see how ready you are that's great 
That's great. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you today. And you are just um, uh, full of wisdom in this subject. And um, it was really enjoyable. So thank you. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me.